areas of assessment, and these are things you're assessed on for task three. The first one is the composition of the problem, which is worth eight marks. You need to clearly and carefully break down the problem into smaller parts, then fully explain what needs to go into the system, which is your inputs, what the system needs to do, which is processes, and then what comes out at the end, which is your outputs. 3.2 is the application of logical thinking and conventions. By conventions, we mean using the uh, standard flowchart symbols. So your algorithm needs to work correctly because your steps and logic clear and make sense. So you need to organize your steps through structure and sequence of your flowchart in a way that is smart and efficient, basically. Make sure you use the standard symbols. It doesn't matter if you've got a few small mistakes, as we shall see in the example in a minute. 3.3 is communication of the design, which is worth three marks. So you need to explain your design clearly and use the right technical words for your audience. I'm going to show you an example of a flowchart that was submitted by a student for the summer 2024 in Playset Project Series. This flowchart received seven out of eight for the decomposition, six out of six for the application of logic, and three out of three for communication. So this was almost full marks for this submission. So this is an example of a flowchart that was submitted for the summer 2024 series. As you can see, decomposition, it's quite comprehensive. Um, all the inputs and outputs have been labelled, so you can clearly see what goes into the system, so that's your input and what should come out of the system. That's even including um, messages and prompts and things like that. Um, there are a couple of things wrong, so for example, um, that says process the week chosen, it's done a, a, a decision, um, which is incorrect, it should be a process. So that was probably why I would have got seven out of eight marks for um, the decomposition. But even though it's all on one page, and it does look a bit cluttered, and you can break it down and present it a bit nice, everything is actually in there. And this actually works. Okay, so we've got things like, if we go down there, would you like to enter again, yes or no? and it does different things depending on uh, what you've entered. I think they're saying if you've selected week one, it's going to do that. If you've selected week two, it's going to do that. If you select week three, it does that. And if you select week four, it does that again. You could break those down into separate flowcharts to make that a little bit clearer. But week one goes up there, it, it does all of those things. Um, we've got to open the CSV file and read from that. We've got all the outputs that should take place. We've got make a bar chart, and then we've got outputs, output information as a bar chart as well. So we've got all the things like that, and we've got those for the different weeks. Okay, so if you've not entered week one, two, three, or four, then it comes down here, it says invalid response, would you like to enter again? Um, if you've selected no, there you go, it goes back up to the top there. Um, if you say yes, it's going to ask you again ask you the, for the week, and then process the response again. Would you like to enter some feedback? Interesting. <laughs> okay, so uh, they, they have put a few extra things in there. But all, all the main points are in there. You've got your inputs, your processes, your outputs. You've got a reference to the CSV file, and you've got some charts, which satisfies the requirement for uh, things to be uh, visual. Okay, so in the set task information, it says the solution must allow users to see total income from the different sources, which it does. There. Uh, be easy to use. It is because it's got all the outputs labelled, all the prompts to get the user to input the right data. Display information in a meaningful way. We've got some examples of that down there. We've got the, the bar charts and we've got a pie chart down there. Uh, making use of appropriate textual, numerical, and graphical output in a way that will be relevant to the end user, which it, it clearly does that. So, although it could be presented a little bit better, um, maybe to get uh, complete full marks, uh, that is a good example of how you actually break this task down and the sort of things that you need to be including in your flowchart. So that's a brief explanation of how you would approach task three. There's lots and lots and lots of different answers to this actual task. Um, it all depends on your interpretation and how you want to do this program. So I'm not actually going to go through how to do the 
uh, flowchart for the sample assessment materials. Um, there's not really any point because there are quite a lot of answers. So I'm just going to explain what it is that we're looking for that you need to produce for task three.